<laughs> Hi, Duty. They got a little mirror. <laughs> that is too cute. That's Mickey Mouse. <laughs> My dad is fixing it up. Duty, come back. The adventures of Tyler in his walker. <laughs> we gotta get, he might not wanna walk after he finishes eating. No, I like their makeup. You think he will? We're going to see great nephew in his walker. Oh, it has a what remote. Kind of, kind of considered this as she thought about her Wita. Suddenly, she knew where she would find him. 
he would be in a place that was so full of life that death would flee it for a while. The green place her mother had shown her beyond the desert where the land was blanketed with leafy trees, bushes, plants, and the creatures that lived in them. He would be waiting at the Iroko tree. She almost screamed with joy as she flew faster. Can Bonyango shed real tears? This one could. But what of Benta and Luyu? She wondered with a flicker of hope. Would they be there too? Ah, but fate was cold and brittle. The three of us, Sola, Arro, and Najiba, smiled. We, mentor, teacher, and mother, saw it all in the way that sorcerers experienced and in training often see things deeply connected to them. We wonder if we will ever see her again. What will she become? When she and Wita unite, and they will, what will become of their daughter who laughed so gleefully inside Oye Son Wu's belly on the way to the green place? If Oye Son Wu had taken one last look below to the south with her keen Bonyongo eyes, she'd have seen Nuru, Okiki, and two Iwu children in school uniforms playing in a schoolyard. In the east, stretching into the distance, she'd have seen black paved roads populated by men and women, Okiki and Nuru, riding scooters and carts pulled by camels. In downtown Durfa, she'd have spotted a flying woman discreetly meeting up with a flying man on the roof of the tallest building. But the wave of change was yet to sweep by directly below. There, thousands of Nuru still waited for Onya, for Onye Songwu, all of them screaming, yelling, shouting, laughing, glaring, waiting to wet their tongues with Onye Sewu's blood. Let them wait. They will be waiting for a long, long time. The end. Who fears death? <clears throat> Acknowledgements to the ancestors, spirits, and that place so often called Africa. To my father, whose passing caused me to ask, who fears death? To my mother, to my daughter, and Yango, nephew, Onyidinka, and niece, Obioma, for cheering me up when I was writing the parts of this novel that got me down. To my siblings, Ife, Gosi, and Imisi, for their constant support. To my extended family, always my foundation. To Pat Rothfuss for reading and critiquing Who Fears Death in its infancy back in 2004. To Jennifer Stevenson for having nightmares spawned from this novel. To my agent Don Moss for his vision and guidance. To my editor Betsy Wolham for thinking, seeing, and being outside the box. To David Anthony Durham, Amaka Mbanugo, Tara Krubsack, and Professor Jean Wildman for their excellent feedback along the way. And to the 2004 AP News story by Emily Wax titled, We Want to Make a Light Baby. This article about weaponized rape in the Sudan created the passageway through which Onye Songwu slipped into my world. It was 
a phenomenal read. I enjoyed it immensely. Of course, you have to suspend your belief when you're reading fantasy, but it is the story of an African shape-shifting Ishu, Iwu, most hated, most begrudged of the Okiki and Nuru combined girl sorceress who was charged with saving the world of the Okiki and Nuru and who was charged with being the savior for her people and a woman who stood between people, between the Okiki and the Nuru, her father having raped her mother. She was a product of weaponized rape. A light baby, light hair, light skin, light eyes. <clears throat> a light baby who would be almost like a wiping out of the Okiki race by making herself known when she walks among the people of the Okiki, a hated and despised member of the Iwu group, a mixed breed, hated. It was wonderful. I loved all of it. It was beautifully characterized. The tension was high at so many points. It was magnificent and read that book. It is wonderful. So, Nidi Okokora, great job. Love you.